Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Fintech Show, the show that explores the world of finance, technology, and innovation. Today, we'll be focusing on the implementation of artificial intelligence, or AI, in the banking and insurance industries, and the key challenges faced by these institutions. As we delve into this topic, we'll be exploring the exciting opportunities that AI presents for these fast-paced, highly competitive, and regulated industries. To get a better understanding of the challenges and opportunities associated with AI implementation, we've traveled the globe to speak with some of the industry's leading experts. From New York, London to the beautiful Switzerland, we've met with expert guests who are right at the beating heart of this innovative technology. Speaking of beating hearts, we went right into the center of New York's financial district and we caught up with Rocky Martinez from SmartStream Technologies. And they're an organization with over 40 years worth of experience just in deploying the next generation of tech. Over in Zurich, I chatted with Ericsson Chan from the eponymous Zurich Insurance Group. And also, back home here in the FF studio, we were lucky enough to host Ash Booth from HSBC. Now, without further ado, let's find out how organizations, big and small, can implement AI. Where do you see the main kind of overtures of AI innovation in financial services in the future? And how is HSBC going to be, continue to be a part of it? Yeah, we're at a real fascinating time, I think, in the arc of progress of AI. Yeah. And financial markets is just a fascinating space to apply it because we're so data driven. We've been, even though I say we weren't born in technology, we've been very technology focused for so many years now. It's an interesting space to be. I don't like to be in the business of predictions, but th there's lots of observations that I think point to some, some inevitable directions, shall we say. I think sticking with the large language models at the moment, I think even if I just look at language modeling, and I don't speak just for financial markets and financial services here even, I think we're on the cusp of a transition in terms of how we work from, I guess what I could call the era of generation to the era of revision. If you think about how you might use and how many people are using things like chat GPT, we used to, in many jobs, whether you're a programmer, whether you work in marketing or you're writing research reports, you would start with a blank page yeah. and you would generate something from scratch. I think over the next few years, we're gonna, it's, it's going to be, become the norm to move away from that and start with or to have something automatically generated for you yeah. and you will revise that for many reasons. I mentioned the idea of proving correctness and truthworthiness. And also, you know, some of the big players in this space have been quite open about their plans to integrate with a lot of the common productivity tools that we use. And I think that will do wonders for productivity. And I think it will set a general trend for how we think about integrating AI into some of our strategic systems. Often, we naively, when we first think about it, have this idea that AI will replace a thing or replace a process or will be quite in your face, you kind of interact with an AI system. I think it will be much more in the background. I think our roles will have bit, bits of them that are automated for us. And as I say, we, we have information provided to us. You know, we think that uh, client ABC might be interested in this thing. Here's some context and some information. We suggest you might have a conversation with them about um, this particular thing. And it would just be having information surfaced to us such that we can focus on those high value conversations or trades or complex risk management processes or whatever they are. Um, but a lot of the background mundane analysis is kind of done for us and, and guides us on the way. Yeah. That kind of general trend is where I see it going. Let's look at the technologies that are enabling these changes, the mm -hmm. engineering these changes. Yep. How is the technology, for instance, we're seeing AI automation really hit retail. People on the street are now far more aware of its powers than usual. But for such an actuarial industry such as insurance, what does that mean for the power that you guys can achieve? 
There is a lot, and AI is not new to us. Sure. So I, I will look at it, uh, we, we talk about AI a lot. Of course, recently, everybody want to talk about uh, GPT. <laughs> but uh, AI has many different areas. It's AI, as it says, artificial intelligence is just like a human being. There are many areas, like cognitive, so sensing our visual uh, visions, uh -huh. and, and that is one area. And then another area is a, a knowledge base. It's like a NLP, natural language processing, where the GPT comes in uh, uh, big time. Now uh, three to going to four. And there are different area of AI. We do use different area of AI to embed it into our, our improve our intelligence of the process. So um, it, it definitely is important. And but before that, uh, we need to make sure we have the foundation well built, data needs to be there, yeah. and then uh, and then how do we leverage it? So we need to have the skills, how to leverage AI, and then more importantly, because of our commitment on data privacy, our commitment to our customer, make sure we are properly using our data. Yeah. So we have to have a, a, we need to make sure our data is not biased. So therefore, AI that we generate is not biased. We need to be transparent, explainable, all the AI that we have built. We build AI a lot, but we need to make sure we build it in the right way. Yeah. So AI is important. So is, is um, uh, we can talk about GBT too, but then it's not just about GBT. So at the same time, as AI get more and more efficient, it will help us to do a lot of things to release uh, our a lot of the manual effort, make it more efficient. And also we need to start to train our own employees how to leverage AI better. So in some ways, it's not necessarily replacing the existing job, yeah. but the existing job requirement will be different than before. So we also need to make sure, upskill everybody. So insurance companies, um, remember they they cover people and they make sure that their premiums are are safeguarded because they sometimes need to pay out on those on those policies. So um, what insurance companies have to realize is that the technology will help them handle their premiums better because they don't have to have armies of people typing in all kinds of policy changes, all kind of addendums two policies, uh, and then keep track of every payment. Uh, especially in the US, when you get a, an insurance, you buy, let's say, car insurance, and then you have all of these um, addendums to the policy, and they all cost $10, $20, and then you end up with a number at the end. That all has to merge up together, and a lot of it is done through older technology or people. So by focusing on using technology to process those payments faster, process those changes to policies faster, using uh, natural language processing to understand what state you're in, as opposed to having a person say, only this type of addendum is allowed on a policy. Doing that through a computer saves you people, saves you time, and allows you to actually get revenue in faster. Many of the various technology partners that we work with providing additional services to a lot of the tools we use. Uh, we encourage that, we want to see it. We're going to have to work really closely with those firms to make sure that they are aligned with our ethical principles, how we want to use AI, and that's a fun challenge too. But a lot of it I see as a, a commodity that will integrate with many of the tools we use. On the other hand, when it comes to the, our kind of core value proposition, when it comes to how we manage risk, how we price things, how we measure the probability of certain risks. That's an area where I see us leading and developing a lot of things in-house. The wonderful thing about the AI academic community and even some of the tech giants is people are very, there's a, there's a culture of openness around knowledge uh, and that's wonderful. We see a lot of people across the business writing academic papers, speaking at conferences. It's a very open wow. community, and that's good yeah. because fundamentally banking is the business of managing risk. And although, of course, we want a competitive edge, if everyone is better at managing risk, I think that's good for, good for everyone.
A lot of banks and a lot of insurers are large-scale organizations with huge regulatory uh, obligations. What are some of the challenges as a result that these institutions have to go through when trying to implement AI? So basically, the way I look at it is, is friction into getting something done. And that's why artificial intelligence, machine learning, RPA, which falls into this realm, has taken off is because organizations are looking to remove that friction to get anything done within an organization. So what SmartStream does is we remove that friction several ways. One, our software, we've launched Air in uh, the last year or two. Um, and what that does is that's becoming a component that we're putting into all of our products because it reduces the friction to get data into a software that allows you to do the function that you want it to do. So for instance, in reconciliations, you want to take two files and you want to onboard them quickly and then have them reconcile and then whatever exceptions come out, come out and you deal with them. The trick is you don't spend many, many, many days, hours, months trying to build rules to reconcile. That's what the product does. It says, we know what these things look like and these two, two records are actually reconciled and they move on and there's a bunch of reduction in friction because people aren't doing that, machines are doing it. Where do you see the future of insurance? I think the uh, future of insurance is partly is we go to where the customers are, yep. but most importantly it will be a service led. It's not just uh, giving uh, when there's an incident then we will pay out. We need to look at the whole risk management end to end. And then ultimately we are here to make customers life easier, make everything seamless. If it's a commercial client, we need, uh, we will make our commercial client business stronger. So that's what we are here for. It's not just to pay out. That's about all we've got time for on today's episode. I've got to say a massive thank you to Rocky Martinez, Ericsson Chan and Ash Booth. You guys have been absolutely brilliant and I'm so thankful to actually get your insights on such an exciting topic. Also a massive thank you to you, our viewers. You can catch the rest of the series and lots more over at ffnews.com, of course YouTube, but especially LinkedIn where you'll see me in the comments. Thank you very much and goodbye.